Yo yo, it's Galwa, and welcome to RE Immersion Reshade 2.0 install tutorial. Okay, a little while ago, I wrote up these clear instructions on how to install the reshade properly with no issues. I've recently had to reinstall Windows myself, so I thought, why not install it along with you guys and uh, have an even clearer tutorial? Okay, so before we get started with the tutorial, you want to download the game itself installed. You want to run the game and you want to get yourself at least through to a point where you have unlocked the West Wing offices with the spade key. This is because later on we need an area to compare light and dark so that we can adjust settings. So once you've installed the game, booted it up and got yourself through into the West Wing with the spade key, we want to start the tutorial. Okay. Number one, you do not need the RE Immersion No Vignette mod. RE Framework has no vignette built in. This is referring to this file here on the download page. We do not need this one. We do not need it. The version of RE Framework on the Nexus is out of date. Get the stable version from GitHub. Okay, so I'm going to copy this link, pop that in, and that will bring you onto this page. So on the GitHub, download re2 underscore td866.zip. Now remember, this reshade only works with the non-ray traced version of Resident Evil 2, so it will only work on the DX11 version, not the DX12 version. So on the GitHub page, we want to scroll down and you'll see a list of assets here. We are looking for re2td866.zip. So we'll click on that and we'll give that a download. Next, you want to open your re2r directory where your Resident Evil 2.exe is found. This can be located through Steam. Open up Steam and find yourself Resident Evil 2 with the DirectX 11 version. You want to right click, click on properties, installed files and browse. From there, you can close Steam. Now that we have the directory open, unzip the dinput8.dll file and the reframework folder into your RE2R directory. You only need these two files. Do not unzip all of the files. The rest of the files are for VR. We do not need them. So next, we want to go to our downloads folder and click on RE2TD866ZIP that we just downloaded. And we want to unzip a couple of files. Now, I assume we all know how to unzip files at this point, so I won't be explaining that. So we want to grab the dinput8dll. And we want to grab the reframework folder and put them both into the RE2 directory. Boot up your game and initialize RE framework. Use the insert key to open and close the RE framework menu. So I've booted up the game and on the left now you can see RE framework has initialized itself. If you press the insert key, this is how we open and close RE framework. In the RE framework menu, click on camera and a drop down menu will open. Select enabled and no vignette and now your vignettes are disabled. So go over to camera, select that and you want to make sure that these are both enabled and you can see it takes off the vignette. Just on a side note, set the anti-aliasing to TAA in your graphics options within the game itself. Open the RE Framework menu with insert and click on script generated UI near the bottom. A drop down menu will appear. Click on sharpness settings and another drop down menu will appear. Select sharpness enabled and TAA jitter enabled. This vastly improves the anti aliasing in the game. For some reason, it won't save the sharpness settings in RE Framework, so they must be selected every time you open the game, but it is well worth it. Okay, so if we scroll down, you'll see script generated UI. Scroll down again, sharpness settings, click there. And we'll have sharpness enabled and TAA jitter enabled. 
I'll close that with insert. Open up the save you made earlier. Go to options. Go to graphics. Scroll down to anti-aliasing. Make sure that is on TAA. Just remember, every time you boot up a game, you will need to switch these two settings on. They will not save. The disabled vignette settings do save, so you don't have to worry about that whatsoever. Step 2. Now to download Reshade itself. Go to the Reshade website at this link here and download the latest version. It will work. There is some comments in the comments section saying it doesn't work. It will work. Okay, so I'll grab this link here. Copy and paste that at the top. And download the latest version. As of this video, that is Reshade 662. So once that's downloaded, place the exe wherever you want. It does not need to be in the Resident Evil 2 directory. Okay, so from your downloads folder, you'll have a reshade setup exe. Just put that wherever you like. For myself, I have a utilities folder, so I will just put that in there. Open and run our reshade and select re2, the ret.exe, and hit next. If it's not on the list, browse your files and point it towards your re2.exe, which will be in the directory. So I will open reshade. Run. And it'll bring up a list of your games. Select re2 and hit next. Select DirectX 10, 11, 12 and hit next. Okay, so for me that is pre-selected, so I will hit next. If this is your first time installing Reshade, ignore this step. If you're reinstalling Reshade, it will come up with a page asking if you want to uninstall, reinstall. Select Update Reshade in Effects and hit Next if this is applicable. If this is your first time installing Reshade, it doesn't matter. You should now be on the Effects to Install page. You only need four in total. Clicking a box will open a drop down menu to choose effects individually. Clicking a box twice will select every effect in that pack. You do not need every effect in a pack. If applicable, meaning first time install, click the box twice for sweet effects by cj.dk to open a drop down menu and select lumasharpen.fx. The full pack is selected by default on your first time install, so if you're reinstalling the reshade, you only need to click this box once. As we're installing for the first time, we want to click on this box twice for the drop down menu. Scroll down until we find what we are looking for. Lumasharpen.fx and tick that box. Click the box once for Otis FX by Otis.inf to open the drop down menu and select DepthHaze.fx. So we want to scroll down. Otis FX by Otis. Yep. Click this box once. Scroll down and you want to be finding DepthHaze.fx. Tick that box. Scroll down the list and click the box once for Astray FX by Blue Sky Defender to open the drop down menu and select Clarify FX. Scroll down, this one's quite further down, until you find Astray FX by Blue Sky Defender. Click the box once. Clarify FX. Give it a tick. The final effect, the LUT.FX, is included with the standard effects pack. This pack is installed by default and can't be turned off. What that means is, if we scroll all the way back up to the top, there is a standard effects pack that cannot be switched off. The LUT effect is within this pack, so that's all good. This is all the effects you need. Do not download all slash any other effects. It will bloat your game. Do not browse a preset. Leave that option blank. By browsing a preset, it is referring to this option right here. We don't need to touch that, we just leave that blank. Hit next and the effects will install, and then once they're installed, hit finish. So we will click next. It won't take long because there's only four we need. And then hit finish. Right, step three. So reshade is now installed, but the RE Immersion Reshade 2.0 preset isn't installed yet. 
Download RE Immersion Reshade 2.0 from this mod page. Select Manual Install, Mod Manager Download won't work. Do not download the RE Immersion Reshade for Immersion No Vignette, as was said earlier. So we will go over to the Files tab, and we want this top file here, Manual Download. Do not download the one below it. This is the one we need. Once downloaded, unzip the RE Immersion 2.0.ini file and the Reshade Shaders folder into your RE2R directory. So from the download folder, we want to open the file that we just downloaded and we want to unzip two files. We want to unzip the RE Immersion 2.0.ini file into the main Resident Evil directory. And then we also want to copy over the reshade shaders folder into the directory. It will ask you to replace files in the destination. Make sure that you tick yes to this. This is important. Boot up your game and once at the main menu, it should say reshade is installed at the top of your screen. Close the RE framework menu by first pressing insert, then press the home key to open the reshade menu. Okay, so Reshade has installed successfully, so we will press Insert to close the RE Framework menu and press Home to open the Reshade menu. If applicable, skip the tutorial. On a first time install, you will need to skip the tutorial. Skip the tutorial. Near the top of the menu, there's a box that should say Reshade Preset.ini. Click on that box and the drop down menu will appear. Scroll down and select RE2 Immersion 2.0 INI, then hit select. The main menu screen should now have more color. So at the top of the screen, we want to click Reshade Preset. Scroll all the way down and click on RE Immersion 2.0 INI. Hit select and you'll notice the screen immediately change. Four effects should be selected in the effects list. The three you selected before and then LUT effects as well. There should be four effects selected now. We have Clarity, Depth Haze, LUT and Luma Sharpen. That's everything we need. To toggle effects on and off by the press of a button, select the Settings tab at the top of the Reshade menu. Under General, set the Toggle key to Page Up and the Effect Reload key to Page Down. Then press Home to close the Reshade menu. From here, we want to click on settings at the very top. Right here where it says effect toggles key, click on here and select page up. The one underneath for effects reload key, we want to click on there and select that as page down and then press home key to close the menu. You can now toggle the effects on and off with page up. If effects glitch for whatever reason, you can reload them with page down. So if we press page up, it will turn off the shader on command if for whatever reason you want to turn it off. And page down, if you have any graphical glitches at any point, will reload the shaders and should fix it. This has never happened to me personally, but you never know. And finally, step four, your brightness settings will need adjusted. Now, this will be your brightness settings in game. Go to the RPD main hall and tweak your brightness settings. Then go into either the west offices or the east wing hallway to see how they look in the dark slash with a flashlight. Once you've tweaked it to your liking, when you're happy, then we're done. So back in the game, we want to go to options. I believe it is display settings and brightness. We want to adjust these until you find something that you like. I personally find that having this one on the darkest helps and then adjust the others from there. But this will vary with everybody. Just decide on what you think's best. While tweaking your brightness settings to find what's good for you, you'll want to run in between the main RPD hall itself and the West Wing offices to see what things look like while it's light and while it's dark. And that's it, you're good to go. Pressing page up, you can really tell the difference between the two of them. I can't play without this reshade now, it's so much better. And thanks to Jimmy and Dreserg in the first place for this reshade, I can't play without it. Endorse the mod and the author, 
if you enjoyed this reshade. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy guys. Peace.